Tatpadam darshitam yena tasmai shri gurave namaha Vameva mata chapipa vameva Vameva bandhuscha sakha vameva Vameva medya dravinam Vameva Vameva sarvam mama deva deva Vameva sarvam mama deva deva Chai Guru Om Sahana Vamatu, Sahana Bunatu, Sahabiriam Karavavahai, E Jaspinavadhita Mastuma Vid Vishavahai, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. So where are we in our text? On number 29, page 84. Ganesh, will you help us out, please? <clears throat> We're in the nectar of knowledge, homogenous existence like the sky section. Nirnata Natha Rahitam Hi Nirakulam Vai Nishchitta Chitta Vigatam Hi Nirakulam Vai Samvidhi Sarvam Vigatam Hi Nirakulam Vai Yanamrutam Samarasam Gaganopamoham I am without a master and the absence of a master. I am unperturbed. I have transcended mind and absence of mind. I am unperturbed. Know me as unperturbed and transcendent and transcendent of all. And the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence like the sky. So again, what the whole point of this section is it's not about making the equipment one way or another. It's not about being a bad person and trying to become virtuous or a sick person trying to get well or a vicious person trying to become nice. As Swamiji always used to say, get out. Get out. Perturbation, non perturbation are just mind states. They're illusory. I saw the funniest video, which so demonstrates this. It was a dog watching a dust down. You know, it's like a mini, mini, mini cyclone. Just whoosh, 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 
and the dog would see it and the dog would go after it and try to bite it and the thing would disappear. And then it would reform again and then he'd run over there and try to bite the dust devil. There was nothing there. Nothing there. So the person of steady wisdom is given up being concerned about stupid minds. Because he knows or she knows. I am the nectar of knowledge. Samarasam means an amalgam of a homogenous existence or substance. I looked it up. Like the Gangana, the star. When I look inside, I can't find a person. All there's there, all that is there is Chidakasha, the space of pure. Next one. Kantaramandaramidam hikatham vadami samsiddha samshayamidam hikatham vadami evam irantararasamam hi irakulam vai nyanabhritam samarasa gaganopamoham How shall I say that this is a forest or a temple? How shall I say that this is proved or doubtful? It is thus one uninterrupted homogeneous calm existence and the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence like the sky. So my view of the world, whether this is a sacred space or an unholy space, or more practically speaking, this is a space where I like to be or a space where I don't like to be. For the man of wisdom, none of it makes any difference. And even if the surface of the mind responds or reacts to it, he knows or she knows exactly what's going on. When the environment's conducive, the mind is pacified. When the environment is not conducive, the mind whines. No big deal. It has nothing to do with what's real. What's there as the world of name and form is nothing but consciousness. So some people will get in a state where, oh, I'm feeling so sensitive. I just can't be around so and so. And I don't like to go to such and such a place. Person of steady wisdom, you no, know, she can be anywhere. She can be anywhere. Doesn't matter. Where should she go? Pranabda. Let the karma of the body itself take it to this place or that place. Again, I use the, the image that this one is like the ball bearing in God's pinball machine. And it birthed. Paddles, send it out, and this goes bounce here, bounce there, bang there, bounce there, comes back down. Whack! The Lord bounces me out there again. And whack a doodle, whack a doodle, whack a doodle, whack. Who knows where it's going to go? And at some point, it goes into the gutter, and you're dead. 
very different than those people who have a business plan for life. Any thoughts on this? Yeah, I just didn't hear the last th thing you said. Very different from people. And those people who have a business plan for life. Oh. So some people, you know, in, in the corporate world, there's a business plan. This is what we're going to achieve in one year. This is what we're going to achieve in five years, yeah. etc. So we have this all planned out, our business plan. And some people actually live their lives that way. By this age, I will have been able to buy a house. And by this age, I will have advanced to this position in the company. And then I'm going to get married and have two kids and a dog. You know, and this is their business plan for their life. And that may or may not happen. But the point is, it's irrelevant to happiness. And there's the old slogan, if you want to find out if God has a sense of humor, make a plan. <laughs> Humanity proposes, but God disposes. Or in Gita, Krishna says, I am the karma kala God. I am the giver of the fruits of action. All you get is work to come. Never to its fruits. Any thoughts on this? Now, on a practical level, in the now, certainly you can make plans. You know, next Thursday, my stepsister and brother-in-law are coming to visit. Reminder, there's no class next Thursday. That's my plan. But she may call me up in the middle of the week and say, oh, something's happened. We're not coming. I don't know. But whatever happens will be just fine. Next verse. Nirjiva jiva rahitam satatam vibhati. Nirbija bija rahitam satatam vibhati. Nirvana bandha rahitam satatam vibhati. Nyanam ratam samarasam gaganopa moham. <coughs> the self, devoid of life and lifelessness, shines forever. Devoid of seed and seedlessness of liberation and bondage, it shines forever. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence like the sky. So, when we go back and look at Shankara and talk about the qualifications of a fit student, the fourth one is the Mumukshu. <clears throat> the burning desire for liberation. In Gita, Krishna says, if you cannot realize who you are, then by all means, see yourself as a yogi, one who aspires to union with the infinite. But here is a great secret. Your ego never arrives. What happens is the mind quits asking all the questions. One gives up concerns about bondage and liberation or samadhi or shmamadhi. All of that. Now again, this shloka is addressed to those who have 
to some degree the direct experience. Oh, I am the nectar of knowledge. Infinite, homogenous existence, separate from this world, empty like the sky. Bondage, no liberation, no birth, no reincarnation. Attachment, no renunciation. Scripture, no guru. Shishya. All of that is in the dream. Something there is that's very real. That's always present. Um, I. Uh, next verse. I think we may have skipped, did we skip 30 or am I, am I off? I couldn't tell you, I can't see. Ganesh, did we skip verse 30? I think so, yeah. I think we skipped 30. Nice. All right. I don't think these are linear, so let's back up. Thank yeah. you, George. Yeah, I think we skipped 30. Wait. No, I don't think we <laughs> read it in English, please. Yeah. How shall I say that this is a forest or a temple? Yes. How we should did I say that. You, you did that, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So yeah, we didn't skip it. Okay, next one. Sambhuti Varjita Midam Satatam Vibhati. Samsara Varjita Midam Satatam Vibhati Samhara Varjita Midam Satatam Vibhati Jnana Amrita Samarasa Gaganopa Moham <clears throat> It shines forever, devoid of birth, mundane existence and death. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. It shines forever. Eternal Prakasha light. Beyond birth, death, corporeal existence. All of that passes in front of me. Of your hand in front of your face. Fact, that self is in another dimension. It pervades this dimension. Yet it's never touched by it. Next one. Ulekha matram apite. Nachanama rupam <clears throat> near binna binna mapite, nahivas to kinchit near lajamana sakaroshi katham vishadam yanam ritam samarasam gaganopa moham. Thou hast no name and form, even to the extent of illusion, nor any substance differentiated or undifferentiated. Why dost thou grieve, O thou of shameless mind? I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence like the sky. So frequently students will say, well, Jim, is it like this? Or is it like that? Or 
does it is it I've had this experience and, and it goes here or is it over there or behind or above? All I can say is it is of the upadation. Those efforts to define and describe frequent, not always, are attempts to try to nail it down and understand it, to grasp it. It is agraha, ungraspable. Unfigureoutable. of your predation beyond all speech about it. Go there. Swamiji used to say, meet me there. Show us the awakened state of mind. And then, if we still have problems, the mind will say, Yeah, but what about this and that? And, you know, no, I have to worry about this. It's, you know, this is important. Knock yourself out. Listen very carefully. Worry is an act of self-indulgence. If you must think of the world, be solution oriented. Staying home and wringing your hands does nothing. Someone else is suffering and I make myself suffer. I feel better about myself. Oh, I must really care because I'm miserable. That's all it is. Think. Frequently, someone else is suffering, and we cannot do anything. Except hold some sacred space. Best we can do. So the person of steady wisdom gives all that praise in the sun. Any thoughts? Next one. Let me, let me, before we get into that, it doesn't mean we don't respond with politeness. If someone comes to us and say, oh, I'm so upset. My mother just was diagnosed with cancer. What do you do? You're probably, you say, oh, I'm so sorry. Is there anything I can do to be of support? If you want, you can even say, I'll pray for you both. But it does no good to go home and wring your hands.
Okay, next verse. Kim Nama Rodi Shisake, Najara Namrityu, Kim Nama Rodi Shisake, Najadan Jan Madukam, Kim Nama Rodi Shisake, Najate Why weepest thou, friend? Thou hast no old age or death. Why weepest thou, friend? Thou hast no misery of birth. Why weepest thou, friend? There is no change for thee. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence like the sky. So the point here is not only are you a changeless reality, so is the other person, even though they don't know it. They're okay. Even dying is safe, as Ram Das used to say. Now, it's interesting. I'm not quite sure why the translator of this text has decided to use the archaic thou, why weepest thou, etc. But I do want to share with you something that many of us do not know about the English language. So in Romance languages, you have a familiar form of you and a formal form. So like, for example, in Spanish, you have tu, the familiar, and you have usted the formal. English also has a familiar and a formal form. If you go back to Elizabethan English, which is where this stuff kind of comes from, the formal form is you. The Familiar form is thou. So, for example, if you go see Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, Romeo will address his father as you, but he addresses Juliet as thou. Now, here's a very interesting point, just when you're reading old-timey stuff in English. Susili, when you go to a Spanish-language mass and they're singing a song or they're doing a prayer, do they address God as usted or as tú? Tú. Yes! Isn't that interesting? So Spanish language people, by and large, feel much closer to God <laughs> because they're used to expressing, to using the familiar. Why not use the familiar? God knows your every thought before you think it. Mm. Knows every secret of your heart. Talk about intimacy, it's your very self. Mm. But somehow over the years, because of the language in the King James Version especially, people have come to see God talk of thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. The thee and the thou language. We think it's, you know, God's distant because people don't talk like that anymore. So understand that. So in this verse, why weepest thou my mind? The language that the translator is using is the language of intimacy. Any thoughts on this? 
Yeah, I, yeah, I always thought it was the opposite. No, don't believe me. I believe you. <laughs> pick up uh, any old, pick up any Shakespeare play, and it'll just pop out at you. You know, if somebody's addressing the king, they'll use you. If they're addressing an equal or an intimate, they'll use thou. So he's speaking to his own mind in this verse? Yes. Okay. Yes. Why weepest thou, my stupid mind? So when I was doing sadhana, my nickname for my mind was Mudha, which means fool. There you are wanting again. Ooh, 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 ooh. I, so I just... repetitive, so stupid and mechanical, so boring, still does it. <laughs> I, I just think it's amazing. I, I just have to say that, that I, I, I just think it's amazing that this, um, what the material materialist paradigm has done to us um, and and religion and all this conditioning it's just it just oh, yeah. but just, such is the lord's maya it's everywhere and for thousands of years we're not unique We're born into ignorance. So to use another Christian image, um, it was St. Augustine who came up or really codified the doctrine of original sin. So those of you who come from a Christian background, especially a Catholic background, what's original sin? That's one you It's really kinky that you make up. No. Where it comes from, what St. Augustine said. We baptize people to remove their sins. So in the earliest church, basically, it was adult baptism. Yes, I'm ready to be baptized. Augustine himself was baptized as an adult. Constantine didn't get baptized to close to his death. But always from the beginning, if Joe and Mary Christian were going to become baptized, their kids would be baptized too. So infant and child baptism occurred in the church from its very earliest times. So the church decided that the age of seven is the age of reason. So any kid younger than seven can't really sin because they don't have the mental capacity to formulate that kind of disobedience. But we baptize them anyway. So if they're unable to formulate with a mature mind a sin and we baptize them, what are we baptizing them for? So Augustine said, there must be an original sin some taint upon us into which we're all born. Very weird doctrine. But the Eastern Church, meaning in Constantinople and Turkey and Egypt, they kind of took this doctrine and they came up with an understanding that's very close to the Buddhist and Hindu idea of Maya. So the fact is, we're all born into a state of spiritual ignorance. Scriptures say ignorance is beginningless, but it can have an end. Maya has no end, but we as individuals can wake up.
So it was in the end, Augustine's way of talking about this fact of our direct experience. We're born into a condition where I think I'm a person. And I think the world is separate from me. Getting what I want is gonna make me happy. Getting rid of what I don't like is gonna get rid of my pain. And if someone is mean to me, punch them. And if I can't buy it, steal it. All these things that we're almost born into. So this is Maya. We talk about it at an individual level. We use the term avidya, ignorance. But the deepest understanding of that in Christianity is this deep understanding of original sin, not as something that Adam and Eve did thousands of years ago. That's, that's all allegory. It means it was a way of trying to explain that we're born into Maya. All right, I digress. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Next verse. So, Jim, the reason uh, that he's, the author is using Tao is because it's uh, Sanskrit also has the familiar and um, the formal form. It's Bhavan and Thom. So, the form that's being used here is Rodishi instead of Roditi. So that's why he's saying Tao. So he's uh, basically saying it's a familiar form. And it's familiar form in the Sanskrit? Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? I did not know that. Oh, interesting. Well, see, the guy agrees with me. And what are we most intimate with? The self? but also our own minds. Next verse. Kim nama rodishi sakhe na chatte swarupam Kim nama rodishi sakhe na chatte virupam Kim nama rodishi sakhe na chatte vayam se Yanam ratam samarasam yaganopamoham why dost thou weep, friend? Thou hast no natural form. Why dost thou weep, friend? Thou hast no deformity. Why dost thou weep, friend? Thou hast no age. And the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence like the sky. So the invitation here is you can talk to your own mind. In Gita, Krishna will say the mind is the enemy of the one in ignorance, but it's the friend of the one in knowledge. So whatever I'm grieving, whatever I'm weeping about, whatever I'm upset about, what's the call? I think I'm a person I'm taking the world substantive and real. And I have kartavya, obligatory action, going from point A to point B in order to be happy. And what you do is you talk to your mind. And why are you weeping, my friend? Remember who you are. Let go. Any thoughts? Next one.
किम नाम रोदिषि सखे नचे नचते ृत समोहम Why dost thou weep, friend? Thou hast no age. Why dost thou weep, friend? Thou hast no mind. Why dost thou weep, friend? Thou hast no senses. I'm the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. So, the sense perceptions do not belong to me. The mind does not belong. as we get emptier and emptier as yogis we find that we begin to feel the thoughts and feelings of others especially the feelings as if they were our own and it becomes very difficult to discern is this my stuff or am i just tuning in to somebody else's stuff modern psychology has come close to this with the uh, doctrines of transference and counter transference in the psychotherapeutic model what yoga says is it doesn't matter you deal with it all the same i have no thoughts and feelings of my own none of it belongs to me a feeling becomes present a thought goes by right picking up on somebody else's stuff or is this being triggered out of my own past who cares none of it belongs to me so you need to take responsibility for your stuff at one level we do that but then get out you go to a meditation retreat and you're sitting there in meditation whether you're aware of what knots of the heart arise in you or you're aware of somebody else over there struggling you deal with it the same just don't do something sit there and it will all pass any thoughts on this yeah jim um how is how is that different than seeing the senses or the mind as as non different from ourselves they're different and they're non different when you look at your image in a mirror you see an image in a mirror is the image in the mirror different or not different from the mirror it is the mirror itself appearing as the image 
But if I walk into the bathroom and look at my face in the mirror, and then Ganesh walks into the bathroom and looks at himself in the mirror, well, the mirror is shown up as a Jim and a Ganesh. But has the mirror undergone any change? So consciousness will reveal thoughts, feelings, actions, sense perceptions, other things and beings cognized through the senses. But it's all Chaitanya, the play of consciousness, the play of mind, fundamentally the same but different than chit consciousness. Again, going back to Gita, in Gita, Vyasa coins this expression, asparsha yoga. Prich, prichati means to touch, sparsha. Asparsha means untouched. Yoga means joy. It's a mystery. The way to come to this experientially is just to examine your own direct experience when you do a visualization. I'm going to cut up a mango for snack after class tonight. I close my eyes and I visualize a mango. I don't change into a mango. But the mango of my imagination is not me. Well, it is me and it's not me. There's no second substance. Words fall short. Some scriptures will use the terms Nirguna Brahman Brahman without qualities, Saguna Brahman Brahman with qualities. Is that helpful, Jory? Yeah, I think so. So, so basically, then looking at our experience from that standpoint, it's just the same consciousness, just with name, form, and function? Yeah. Yeah. Another one I like to do, imagine a big tub of water and you put ice cubes in it of different shapes. So the ice cubes are nothing but water appearing as. They're in a grossified form. They're slowed down to become ice. But when they melt, what happens to them? They merge with the water. Fundamentally, they've been no different than the water. It's the names and forms in consciousness. What makes ice cubes? Mystically, our attention on them, our intention. That's the cosmic ice maker. Is that useful? Yes, thank you. Next verse. Why dost thou weep, friend? Thou hast no lust. Why dost thou weep, friend? Thou hast no greed. Why dost thou weep, friend? Thou hast no delusion. I'm the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence like the sky. So, 
You've been living as a brahmachari for decades. You think you no longer have lust. And then an attractive person walks by and you see the thought lies. <laughs> and your point is, it's just a thought. I'm a sannyasi. I have no attachment. Yeah, but those mangoes sure look good. I'm going to get three of them in the box. So the woman or man of wisdom, you give up stupid concerns over the vyabhara, the transactional nature of the mind. Yoga Vasishta uses a wonderful image. So the you have to imagine there you are in, in um, the banks of the river and it's in the, the hot season. And there's a person standing on the bank and they're roasted by the hot sun from head to foot. But then another person wades out into the river up to their chest. Now, they still feel the hot sun on their head and maybe their shoulders. From the chest down, ah, the cool water, sheet water, cool. So the person of steady wisdom isn't concerned about the surface part of the mind and its actions and reactions in the world. Because they don't take it seriously. Now, if you take this on too soon, you can end up rationalizing a lot of bad behavior. So we do do yamas and niyamas when we're beginners. We do cultivate the qualifications of a fit student when we are committed into yoga. But then we reach a point where who cares? It's all just mind. Any thoughts on this? It's just so beautiful. And even the singing and chanting, Ganesh, like, does, does the singing sound beautiful too on purpose? Or does it, I don't know, I feel like everything is just so beautiful. Well, it's a very beautiful poem and Ganesh chants it very beautifully. Yeah. Sometimes. Next verse. I think the beauty is in being imbued by your own mind, um, Zosali. It's the beauty inside of you that comes out. Even better. Thank you. He's oh. wise too. Thank you. Aishwarya mecha sikatham nachate dhanani. Aishwarya mecha sikatham nachate hipatni. Aishwarya mecha sikatham. Nachate mameti nyanam brutam samarasam ragano pamoham. Why dost thou desire affluence? Thou hast no wealth. Why dost thou desire affluence? Thou hast no wife. Why dost thou desire affluence? Thou hast none who is thine own. I am the nectar of knowledge. 
homogeneous existence like this guy. And the word he's using is Aishwaram? Aishwarya. Yeah, Aishwarya means prosperity. Ah, okay. Or they translated as affluence, but yeah. Yeah. So the person of steady wisdom moves through the world like a ghost. Sometimes. Sometimes they present as a very powerful person. Sometimes nobody sees them. Inside. Dead to this world. But the person of steady wisdom has another playground. This Atmaravana, this capacity to revel, Jnana Amrita. Next one. Linga prapancha janushi nachate na meche nirlajja mana samidam chavibhati bhinnam nirbheda bheda rahitam nachate na meche jnana mritam samarasam gaganopa moham Birth in this universe of false appearances is neither thine nor mine. This shameless mind appears as, as differentiated. This, devoid of difference and non-difference, is neither mine nor thine. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like this guy. Jim, is so it thine it? or is it thine? Thine in English. Thine. With a voice T-H, thine. Thou and thine. Okay, thank you. So, many people as yogis are identified with the subtle body. I'm a miserable person. I'm caught up in transmigratory existence. I want to attain self-realization and be free from needing to come back and reincarnate over and over again in this world of sorrows. The idea for them is I am now a jiva and I'm gonna to go to some other state and I won't be that anymore. What actually happens is you realize you were never born in the first place. You never were caught up in the cycle of birth and death. That was all like a very long and very vivid dream. Just like if you are the dreamer and you're in prison in the dream, all you can conceptualize is, I want to get out of the prison. What do I need to do? I have to go to court. Get out of prison in the dream. But then when you wake up, The whole paradigm of the prison and the jail and the court, you see, was dreamlike. Oh, I was never imprisoned in the first place.
not what people think sometimes. It's not what some people expect. Because the truth is, self is never bound. Both bondage and liberation occur to the mind. From the viewpoint of the self, both are in the world. Next verse. No vanu matram apite hiviragarupam. To vana matram apite hisaragarupam. No vanu matram apite hisakamarupam. Thou hast not the nature of non-attachment in the slightest, nor hast thou in the slightest the nature of attachment. Thou hast not even the slightest of the nature of desire. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence like the sky. So at one level we are concerned about what I'm attached to, and what I need to let go. But at another level we see, this is just the silliness of a mind, which is itself not real. The mind sees its own fundamental unreality. Who am I? What am I? Shidananda, I am a form of bliss consciousness. Jnana Amritam, Samarasam, the form of homogenous. Bliss of love. Ganesh, how many more in this chapter? Uh, three, four, five, six, six. Okay, we might be able to finish it. We'll keep going. Dhyata nate hi hridaye nachate samadhi dhyanam nate hi hridaye na bahi pradeshaha dhyayam nachate hridaye na hi vastu kalo jnana amritam samarasam kaganopamoham. In thy mind, there is neither the meditator. Neither the meditator, the meditation, nor the object of meditation. Thou hast no samadhi. There is no region outside thee. Nor is there any substance or time. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence like this guy. So here is where we understand that meditation, even samadhi, does not touch the self. And you know, we, we study many scriptures that, that extol the value of Nirvikalpa Samadhi. And one has to be careful. First of all, it can be of great value. But I do not recommend that we make near the Kopa Samadhi another object of desire. Much better 
Do you know your essential nature? Do you know who you are? You can go on a retreat. I've had several students do that. 10 day Goenka Vipassana retreats, they come back. And I say, do you know more self now? No. Did you have some interesting mind state? Yeah. So the seeker meditates maybe dwells in samadhi so that they can purify the mind and realize the self. Person of steady wisdom may be seen to meditate, may abide in samadhi on occasion, not because it adds to their knowledge of the self, it's just the highest form of worldly pleasure. It's what their mind does on its own. Next one. Yatsara Bhuta Makhilam Kathitam Mayate Natvam Name Namahato I have told thee all that is essential. There is neither thou nor anything for me or for a great one. Nor is there any teacher or disciple. The supreme reality is natural and exists in its own way. I'm the nectar of knowledge, homogenous existence like the sky. Yes. So he's summing up the teaching. It's you, it's yourself. Everything else is mitya illusion. Even the teacher, even the talk. What's real? Only I is real. And the great cosmic joke is everybody already asked that. Whether in the mind they know it or not. Next one. Kathameha paramartha tattvam ananda rupam Kathameha paramartha naivam ananda rupam. Kathameha paramartha jnanam vijnana rupam. <coughs> yadi paramaham ekam vart. Yadi paramaham ekam vartate vyoma rupam. If I, the supreme of the nature of sky alone exist, how can there be here the supreme truth, which is blissful reality? How can there be here the supreme truth, which is not of the nature of bliss? And how can there be here the supreme truth of the nature of knowledge and intuition? So what he's saying is, what you're seeking for is not in this world. Give it up. Let it go. Shut up and get out, as Swamiji would say. Give up being concerned about silly minds. Be the spiritual minds. Next verse. Dahana Pavanahinam Vithi Vignana Mekam 
ಅವನಿ ಜಲ ವಿಹಿನಂ ವಿಧಿ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ರೂಪಂ ಸಮಗಮನ ವಿಹೀನಂ ವಿಧಿ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ಮೇಕಂ ಗಗನಮೈವ ವಿಶಾಲಂ ವಿಧಿ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ಮೇಕಂ ನೋ ದ ಒನ್ ಹೂಸ್ ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಇನ್ ಡಿವೋಯ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಫೈರ್ ಇನ್ ಏರ್ ನೋ ದ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ನೇಚರ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಹೂಸ್ ಡಿವೋಯ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಅರ್ತ್ ಇನ್ ವಾಟರ್ ನೋ ದ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ನೇಚರ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಹೂಸ್ ಡಿವೋಯ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ know yourself which is of the nature of consciousness which pervades this world that is never touched by this world don't believe the scripture through your day stop introvert your attention see if you are not still the nectar of knowledge the marginless existence knows. one more or two more two more okay na shunya roopam na vishunya roopam ಶುದ್ಧೂಪಂ ನ ವಿಶುದ್ಧೂಪಂ ವಿಪಂ ನ ಭಾವಿ ಕೆಂಚೇತ್ ಸ್ವರೂಪರೂಪರಮಾರ್ಥತತ್ವರ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ನೇಚರ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ವೈಡ್ ನಾರ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ನೇಚರ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ನಾನ್ ವೈಡ್ ಐ ನೀದರ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ಯೂರ್ ನೇಚರ್ ನಾರ್ ಆಫ್ ಇನ್ ಪ್ಯೂರ್ ನೇಚರ್ ಐ ನೀದರ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ನಾರ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಲೆಸ್ನೆಸ್ I am the supreme reality of the form of its own nature. Yes. So we try to resolve, let go, not be concerned about all the philosophical positions. Let the mind be stupefied. Let it enter into all. in all these questions of emptiness and form all over and the last one munche munche hi samsaram tyagam ಮುಂಚ ಹಿ ಸರ್ವಗಾತ್ಯಗವಿಷಂ ಶುದ್ಧಮೃತಂ ಸಹಜ ಧ್ರುವಂ ರಿನೌನ್ಸ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ವೇ ರಿನೌನ್ಸ್ ರಿನೌನ್ಸ್ ರಿನೌನ್ಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ಇನ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ವೇ ರಿನೌನ್ಸ್ ದ ಪಾಯ್ಸನ್ ಆಫ್ ರಿನೌನ್ಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ಇನ್ ನಾನ್ ರಿನೌನ್ಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ದ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಇಸ್ ಪ್ಯೋರ್ ಇಮ್ ಮಾರ್ಟಲ್ ನ್ಯಾಚುರಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ಮ್ಯೂಟಬಲ್ Oh, I love it. So here he gives us the progression. First, renounce the world. Now, renounce renunciation. Now, renounce the poison of being concerned about renunciation and not renunciation. Give up all concern. Brahma Satyam, Jagam Nitya, Brahman alone is real. All phenomena, rose and sorrow, is illusion. And as Meher Baba used to say, everybody's already realized, don't worry, be happy. Is the is that the end of the chapter then there's no little punishment? Yep, that's it. That's it. Okay. Gorgeous, gorgeous poetry, gorgeous, gorgeous Vedanta. Om Purnamada Purnamidam 
Purnat Purna Mudachate Purnasya Purna Madhaya Purna Meva Vishishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Guru Bhyona Hari Om Om Now again, a reminder, no class next Thursday.